this video, I will talk about the um, effects of the hyperkalemia on the resting membrane potential, specifically the resting membrane potential of uh, cardiac myocytes. Uh, first, let's get the basic understanding of the resting membrane potential. Then we will discuss about the normal state and the hyperkalemic state. So what is hyperkalemia? It is an increase in potassium level in the blood, which uh, means that there is an increase in extracellular potassium, as in here. Um, so the equilibrium potential for potassium is around negative 90 millivolts. The resting membrane potential is maintained by the uh, ion that has the highest conductance uh, through its membrane uh, during resting and the highest conductance for um, uh, for the cell is potassium, then followed by chloride, sodium, and uh, calcium. So in this case, potassium has the highest conductance at rest. Therefore, uh, potassium electrochemical gradient has the most effect on the membrane's potential. The resting membrane potential tends to move towards potassium equilibrium potential, right here. So under normal conditions, uh, there are more of potassium inside the cell, so more intracellular potassium, than uh, they are outside of the cell, so less extracellular potassium. So. So on the left, right here, is the uh, normal cell. Uh, as you can see that there are uh, leak channels for, on the cell membrane for both the sodium and the potassium. However, there are much more potassium channels than there are sodium channels. Uh, therefore, the conductance for potassium ions is much greater than for the sodium ion. For this reason, the potassium ion is the main ion that is used to maintain the resting uh, membrane potential. Under normal conditions, the cardiac myocyte's resting membrane potential is around negative 90 millivolts. Uh, and there are more potassium inside the cell than there are uh, outside of the cells. So, uh, more intracellular potassium and less extracellular potassium. And the um, potassium is freely moving into and out of the cells through this leak channels to maintain the electrical chemical gradients at the resting membrane potential. And there are no net movements into or out of the cell uh, by uh, the potassium. So if one potassium is moving out, uh, there's one potassium moving in. Uh, this is to help keep the electrical uh, chemical gradients at the resting member membrane potentials of negative 90 millivolts. So on the right, we have the case of hyperkalemia, an increase in the level of potassium in the blood, which means that there is an increase in the level of potassium outside of the cell. So now we have uh, the chemical gradient for potassium. It has been changed, and that change caused a change in the resting membrane potential. Since we have disrupted the chemical equilibrium for the potassium ions uh, with more of the potassium ions outside of the cell, the net flow of uh, potassium will be into the cells, into the cells right here, until a new electrochemical gradient has been established. So as you can see that because there are more uh, potassiums outside the cells now, um, it, is, it is harder for the potassium inside the cell to 
move out of the cells because the new uh, the uh, because there's an increase in potassium outside the cells, and there's more likely for these potassiums out here since it has been increased um, in the level of potassium outside the cells. More likely for it to uh, move into the cells through the leak. Uh, potassium channels because now with more of the uh, potassium ions, which is a positive ion inside the cell, the cell becomes less negative, uh, which means it's been depolarized. So under uh, the normal conditions, the resting membrane potential of the cardiac myocytes is around negative 90 millivolts. Uh, so a patient with hyperkalemia uh, their new resting mem membrane potentials may be negative 85 or negative uh, 80 because the cell has been depolarized. It's become less negative due to the fact that uh, potassium is trapped inside the cell due to an increase of potassium outside of the cell. There are three main effects that hyperkalemia has on the action potential of cardiac myocytes. First one, there is an increase in excitability. As you can see right here, this represents the hyperkalemic uh, state. This one is the normal state. Um, because in hyperkalemia, there are more of uh, the potassium inside the cell, the cell membrane potentials, be, uh, resting membrane potentials becomes less negative, as we can see here. It's less negative than over here on uh, A. Uh, so it is uh, closer to the threshold potential. So then the, uh, the cells is easier uh, to excite and it's easier to uh, depolarize. So the second effect is a decrease in the amplitude uh, of the action potential. As you can see that the amplitude is right here, measured from here to here. Uh, it's, uh, it is uh, shorter than over here. Then under the normal, uh, uh, the normal conditions. Um, so the amplitude of the action potential is measured from the resting, from the resting membrane potential, to the uh, spike value, the tab right here, uh, with hyperkalemia, there is uh, the resting mem membrane potential uh, is decreased. So from here to from here it goes down to here. So um, the amplitude would also decrease. So furthermore. In cardiac myocyte, the action potential is initiated when the fast voltage-gated uh, sodium channels open to depolarize the cell, depolarize the cell here. So in order for this channel, channel right here, to be uh, reactivated after depolarization and opens again, the cell needs to be polarized Polarized, so it needs to be polarized to its uh, physiological membrane potential, which is back to negative 90. But uh, since the cell is in an abnormally depolarized uh, state due to hyperkalemia, as in this case, so it's abnormally depolarized, uh, depolarized due to hyperkalemia. So some of the sodium channels are stay inactivated. Uh, and less, less of the voltage sodium channel will open for sodium to come into the cell during depolarization state. So because it's not fully deep, uh, it's not fully polarized to negative 90, uh, the, the sum of the sodium channels right here stays inactivated because it needs to be fully polarized in order for it to be reactivated. So now we have less of the sodium channels for uh, to uh, open up uh, during the depolarization. So there's less conductance uh, 
uh, of uh, sodium into the cell during depolarization. And that's why we see the peak right here. It's not as high as in the normal case right here. So in that uh, sense, the uh, there's an, a decrease in the amplitude of the action potential. One is decrease in the peak, and the other one is it's been depolarized. So it's been depolarized, less negative, so it's shorter up here and here. The third effect that hyperkalemia has on the action potential is the prolonged repolarization of the cell. Right here, it's been prolonged compared to this one of the cells, which leads to decrease in the frequency of the action potential. So during uh, repolarization, so um, the cell is going to become less or uh, become more negative, repolarization. Um, the potassiums will move out of the cell, so potassium efflux. Uh, since uh, potassium has a positive charge, it's moving out of the cell, the cells become uh, more negative, so it's polarized. So because we have um, hyperkalemia, more of the potassium outside of the cell, uh, it is harder for potassium to move out of the cells, cells compared to the uh, normal conditions where there's less, there are normal uh, potassium outside the cells. And now we have more uh, out. So potassium is, it's harder for potassium to move out of the cells. Uh, and therefore it is slowed, leading to a prolonged repolarization.